Hi, I'm Dr. Daniel Cardamel. I'm a marine biologist with the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, and I'm here at Swami's Beach in beautiful Southern California. I'd like to take just a couple of minutes today to talk to you about the very important issue of water sustainability. Here in Southern California, as is the case in many parts of the world, we're suffering from chronic water shortages, shortages that threaten not only our convenience, but our economy, our environmental health, and ultimately our survival. And yet, here we are on the shoreline of one of the world's largest natural water reservoirs, the Pacific Ocean. Recent advances in science have made it possible to convert ocean water to fresh water on very large scales using reverse osmosis. And this process is called desalination. Today, there are thousands of desalination plants around the world. And while most of these are pretty small in scale, the largest can produce upwards of 100 million gallons of fresh water per day. Southern California is jumping on the desalination train. We have several plants that are either proposed or being built, and it's estimated that by the year 2020, desalination could provide up to 10% of our regional freshwater needs. As an environmental consultant to the desalination industry, my job is to identify, assess, and provide solutions for potential environmental impacts arising from this process so that desalination plants can be built and operated in an environmentally responsible way. What are some of these impacts? Well, as a consultant, I tend to focus on three main areas. The first of these is called impingement and entrainment. And that's simply a fancy way of saying that small animals and plankton can be sucked into the underwater intake tubes of a desalination plant. Secondly, is the issue of hypersalinity toxicity. What this means is that when water exits a desalination plant and is pumped back into the ocean, it's typically about twice as salty as when it came in. So this hypersalinity can affect the biological processes of plants and animals that are in the immediate vicinity of the discharge. Third is the issue of site specificity. Each location on the coast has its own unique biological and oceanographic characteristics. These need to be taken into account during the initial planning stages to minimize environmental impacts on sensitive habitats. And so, as our society moves towards a greater dependence on alternative water sources, I look forward to working with the desalination industry, with legislators, with the public, and with environmental groups to create progress in the area of water sustainability while maintaining healthy, robust coastal ecosystems. Thank you.